trout live in beautiful places. The best thing about this boat is you never have to worry about having motor problems. Yeah. It starts every time. Really as close as you can get to the, the real river experience. Exactly. I mean, it's, it doesn't get any more peaceful than this, you know. Hey, we're long overdue for a drift trip, and we're with Brandon Wade from Cumberland Drifters. Cumberland Drifters. He's not big, but man, he doesn't know it. He's got a little more backbone than I thought he had. He's not I think you insulted him. I think he grew six inches. Yeah, he was only six inches long when you hooked him. Pretty fish. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's over there giddy. He's 12 incher. Not too bad. He was fun. Drift fishing in a boat like this that you made, you don't see a whole lot of these out here. No, it's more of a Western thing. You know, if you go out Montana and stuff like this, you're gonna see these all over the place. The thinking behind it is it is designed for fly fishing. What makes this particular to fly fishing? What in this design? Well, first of all, you have high sides because, you know, these things are made for rivers with rapids. We don't have any rapids out here. We're not going over the Cumberland Falls today or anything. But, uh, so they're really stable. They're really maneuverable to get around rocks and things. And the best part about what we're doing out here, you try to get a good dead drift. You want your flies drifting along the same speed as everything else. And so using the oars, we can make that happen and you can have, you know, mile long drifts without having to cast and cast and cast like you would if you're waiting. So go fish. Uh, man, he came out of nowhere. <laughs> Well, he's right in that current. Feels like I got a whale on. Yeah. <laughs> nope. There Hard he is. Oh, pretty fish. Rainbow. I would come down here to catch one of these. In all seriousness, they're, yeah. they're such fun, and such fighters. All right, my hands are wet. Quick release. Go. He's good to go. I think there's probably maybe another one of those. <laughs> just not right you know I've, I've had and this is it's, it's a great compliment when you take somebody out fishing and they say man that's that was the best day of fishing I've ever had it's just people aren't used to catching fish like this because they don't know about this place not only that it's your surroundings yeah you don't see this I mean you don't get this everywhere no people travel all the way across the country you go out to Montana you know go to Alaska and look what we got right here and uh, this is an hour and a half from Lexington. What a beautiful fish. You know? Now this is my, my home river. This is my baby. Now you've been guiding down here a while. Do you remember your reaction when you found out that the dam was in trouble and there was gonna need to be some work done? You no, know, it wasn't good news and it scared all of us to death. Side effects could be with you know drawing the lake down and water quality and I mean we thought there for a while we might lose the whole thing you know uh, especially if the water temperatures get up in the 70s and kills like you know kills every fish in the river uh, so it you know scared me to death and we had a few good years in there but it just the consistency of it uh, just wasn't there anymore you got the dam fixed. So what's your, uh, what's your outlook now, even though you always have been kind of a glass half full well, kind I mean, of guy? I think it's gonna be better than it ever was. Oh, what a you know, look was, at that fish jump. It was great before, and now we've added the brook trout and you know these triploid rainbows that grow you know, like trout on steroids. I like the sound of that. You know, so I think we'll see a state record rainbow hopefully being broken here pretty soon. Tell you what, man, let's go eat lunch. It's kind of chilly. All right, lunchtime. Don't put that on the show. Uh, <laughs> my wife, Julie, is a, uh, well, look at me. She's a good cook. Thank you, uh, Julie. Thank you, Julie. That's roughing it right there. That's tough. Conditions are almost unbearable. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I see that one right on the yeah. other side of that little oh, rock. Yeah. 
But whoever had the idea to put brook trout in here, I'd like to pat them on the back. And speaking of, is that what Hey, the... that's a brook trout. Well, how about that? <laughs> the other day I had my uh, six-year-old out and I bought her a new spinning rod for her birthday. Of course, it was pink. Look what a pretty fish. Look at the colors on this fish. Oh, that's a nice rainbow. Look at the colors on that this nice fish. nice pink stripe. Unbelievable for their size. You yeah. can't believe how they can pull. It's, it's ridiculous. Wait till you get into one that's 20 inches long, you know. You'll it, think you've got a 20 we'll pounder. In, and when you get in for a, a 20 inch fish night, like he was saying, it takes forever. There we go. Whoa, Ooh, look at, look nice at the one. color. Look at that. That, is that the fish of the day? Uh, so far, yeah, that is. Wow. That is the fish of the day. We don't want to, we don't want to handle this anymore than we have to. And quick release, boom. Go. We have a two fly rig here with a Prince Nymph and a Zebra Midge. I got more than one shot at it. Why not give them a buffet, you know? And come to daddy, oh, nope. Nope, you can turn him just up. There we go. Woo. Damn. And that is a healthy fish. That fish fought like crazy. I mean, fought like crazy. <laughs> now, is that a, a rig that you stick with and use a lot year round or? It's a nymph river. You know, nymph fishing out here is hands down the, the most productive way to do it. Um, every now and then you'll get somebody that, you know, they don't want to look at a bobber all day and, you know, hey, if they want to do something else, we will. But this is, uh, this is pretty much what I do 99% of the time and it works really well, as you can see. Man, that's not where I thought that fish was. When I set the hook, I was, he was way back. Oh, you're. <laughs> Another brook. Yeah, I don't know what, you're gonna have to uh, get the something. Front one. He's a chunk. Take him. Well, it's a good day when you have to replace flies just simply because they're getting worn out from so many fish eating them. I don't know if I've caught this many <laughs> trout today. Really? Water quality is good. You can come out here and do this every day. Yeah, it's a brown. Hey, a brown. there's the one you were talking about. Hey, there's a multi, it's a multi-species day. You have now done the Cumberland River Grand Slam. All right, gotta catch a big one here. This is kind of the last hoorah. That's the place to do it right here. Uh-huh. And just when he said, hey, it's time to pull him in, I said, one more cast. Hey, I think you got a fish. I think you're right. That's, oh, that's Tim. a fish. That's, that's a, a fish. Big one. We got a big fish. Look at that stripe we're trying to eat. Look at that stripe we're trying to Holy eat. Holy cow. Get out of there. Oh. <laughs> Did you see that stripe we're trying to eat him? <laughs> that was huge. We got to get him out of there. <laughs> How big was that striper? That thing was 40 pounds. <laughs> that fish is 18 yeah, inches. And let me tell you what, it gave me all I wanted. And almost became striper food. Oh, that striper almost got him. Did. Can you imagine what size of bait you need to throw for those stripers? I can't imagine. That almost never happens, and to get it on film. Well, if your goal was to show the viewers all the different species of trout in the Cumberland River, you did that pretty quickly. 